Greetings. This time in batch 4 Tirunamalai, we had been to Yogi Ram Surat Kumarji's ashram, who was a great mystic of Tirunamalai. On the way, we met Topiyama, who was going in the opposite direction, of course, having a, a divine moment with uh, her. And then, when we entered into Yogi Ram Surat Kumarji's ashram, to our surprise, we saw her behind her. She had walked the other opposite direction, but in no time, she was just behind her. And we were moving around inside the ashram. For the first time, I ever saw her moving inside the ashram there. And uh, along with us, we were moving around, doing the parikrama around uh, the samadhi, mahasamadhi of Yogi Ram Surajji's. <clears throat> and then she... She gave her darshan and went off. And then immediately we saw Devaki Amma sitting, the closest disciple of uh, Yogi Ram Suraji. We went and just bowed to her and she asked to her all this. And we just said, a retreat is going on. And she immediately said, I want to spend some time with you all. Uh, if you can be here after 45 minutes. We said yes. We were in the processes and then we, she, she was already waiting for us sitting on her chair. We went and sat next to her and she asked a little bit about the whereabouts and she spoke some few words which later she said, whatever I speak is all yogi's words. It's all his dropping, she says. And she says, while I was talking to you all, he told me to speak to them. And that's how the first time I've, I've met her many times, I've just touched her feet, but we, I've never had conversation in all this for 15, 16 years of my travel there. But the first time this was a divine moment, I believe it was the presence of all the divine souls with me that made this possible. So you can listen to that video which I would like to share. We shot a little bit of it and we have Mudra, a little child, asking all divine questions. Driya also was asking me, I put already a video where she is asking a question to me in the car and I'm trying to answer her curious mind. These are all very developed conscious minds. And then Mudra had a question to me, where did the ego start? So before I could answer, we had reached the ashram. And then I told Amma, she has some divine question if you can. And she asked Amma, it begins from there. You can have a little bit of what we were able to record. Rajesh Bhai recorded it. You are a girl and a boy. This is ego. You think that you are this body. This body is the body of a girl. And you think you are the girl. Right? So this is ego. Thinking that I am. See, this is dress. Hmm? This is your dress. Your dress. So your dress cannot be you. You are different from your dress here. Can you say this dress is myself? I am this dress. No. This is my dress. Okay? So I am different from my dress. So whatever is mine cannot be I. No? So I am different from whatever is mine. So this dress is your dress and your dress cannot be you. You are different from your dress. So you are different from your body. This is your body. And this body is the girl's body. Do you understand? But when you say I am this girl, I am a girl, my name is Vidra. It is falsehood, no? It's not right, no? It's not the truth. You are not the body. The body is yours. It is your body. You are not the body. No? Do you understand the difference? This flower is your flower. Right? It's your decoration. Are you that decoration? So that is different. So now you know what ego is. So that when the ego is there, what will happen? I want everything for myself. So first, between you and another girl, there's competition. You want it only for yourself. 
I suppose you, you carry some nice dish and then you can share it with other people or you can eat it yourself. But your mummy has made a very rare dish and very, very, very rare meat. So you got a chance now. I don't know, I want you to help her myself because it's very rare. My mother doesn't take it usually. So it's very precious to me. I should. So you eat a lot. Suppose you say, okay, this is very nice food. Everybody will enjoy it and share. And then you share it. Eating it myself is ego. Sharing it with everyone is ego less. That is, ego is selfishness. Whenever you are selfish, you are being the ego self. Whenever you feel that you, you embrace your people, you feel so happy with people, you feel that their suffering is also your suffering, their happiness is your happiness, then it is the right self, not ego self. So the right self is unselfishness, selflessness. <laughs> no, but uh, see, for example, one lady had come here and she was saying, I, this illness, we, wellness. Mm, yes. One word, one letter, which is fantastic. Do you understand that? Everyone is yourself. Your name is Mudra. Stay for a So this is it. That which you, which you are after is right inside you. And remember that your very breath starts from there. As I said, that where the breath starts, the ego also starts. The feeling, time is born. That is why Ramana Bhagavan says, look, locate where the eye starts. And where does the eye start? Where Then how to drop eye? So there is no need to drop eye. You feel it dropping it? Do you feel it dropping it? And how can I know the self? Right now I can uh, intellectually there are two understand. Parts. There are two parts. One is to be able to locate the eye, the ego eye, where it starts, where it is located. The other one is that the, the divine is within me. This body was created by me. Yes, put the breath in that way. So everything is his. Nothing is mine. And it is he is running my life. He is running his body. So instead of this ego, I, we substitute he. And much later he will become part of life. So it is small I, you start with the ego I, small I. And then you soon learn, just as I said, uh, that it is the divine inside who is operating this machine. I am only an instrument, a machine in this I am a puppet in the hands of the divine puppeteer. The divine puppeteer is inside, I believe you have up and down and down and down and down. And then this body goes and comes and thinking, something like that. So then, this Supreme, we think that everything, everything happens because of the presence of the Supreme. That is the path of surrender. Everything happens by His will. So even if you commit a terrible mistake, it's because of His will. If you have some achievement, great achievement, it's because of His will. So when you achieve something, you don't jump and down. When you lose something, you don't fall into depression. Even if it's so everything happens by His will, 
and everything that happens belongs to him. I have nothing to do. Okay, so all happiness, whether it is happiness or a suffering, all is his. Yes. Every happiness is his. Every suffering is his. Okay. Then what are we doing? Just instrument. What are you? Why, why we are here then? Just to be his. Uh, you are here uh, to go from the small eye to the big eye. Okay. The one has become many. The many have to go back to the one. You go, you take an ant. The ant will also think, okay, I am crawling now. My The sweet is there. I must go and take the sweet. This I am is common. You take a mosquito, oh, I am flying here and there. I must find the right blood. Right? The eye will be there in the mosquito. The tree will have that eye. Everything in the cosmos has this eye. This eye is common. This eye has come from the supreme eye. But I am a mosquito. The mosquito thinks I am a mosquito. An ant thinks I am an ant. The tree thinks I am a tree. And a female thinks I am a female. I am a girl. A male thinks, oh, I am a boy or a man. So I am is common to all, but I am a boy, a girl, or a mosquito, or an ant, or a tree, or a bird. This the difference. The difference is the world and ego. I am is accepted. Then I am so relaxed. Nothing is mine. Then I am totally free. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Once you think that the divine is inside you and he is deciding things, he is willing things, and things happen because of his will, you have nothing to do with it. Yes, in happiness or suffering, nothing is mine. Happiness or suffering happen according to his will. Happen, but that is also so when you, when Ramana Bhagavan was there in 17 years, he was seated on one of the rocks there up there, and uh, he was completely absorbed in himself. And three days he was just sitting there, his mother had come all the way. And he found, she found this little boy at some point, you know, the pouring rain and burning sun, just sitting there in silence, total silence. She keeps on saying, please come with me, I will, I will do whatever you want. You can sit like this at home. Why do you sit here and exposed to you? Come, come with me. But he won't answer. Three days she would be sitting by his side, crying and crying and crying because the mother, the boy wouldn't say anything. And then somebody who used to move with the boy came, look, she is the one who gave birth to you, this body, because of which you have got this experience. Give her some reply. Then Raman Maharshi would put her thorn somewhere and then go to her. Whatever is meant to happen, will happen no matter what. Whatever is not meant to happen, will not happen no matter how much you can. Which means everything is predetermined. By whom? By the one in the land. Do you understand? And same example you are giving in Brahma Shri, you are trying to sneak in because it's going to close. You tried here and there, and somehow you are still talking because you are just trying to be here. If you got something, that is what I was telling you, think whatever, that is this time you will be there, that is supposed to happen, that's it. Everything is predetermined, and you will, and whatever I am saying is droppings from the yogi. This is called sadhana chatushtya. First you hear the satsang. Then bring it to your mind again and again, manana. And then once you come to a clarity, you start meditating upon it, you deepen the wisdom. And in the end, samadhi happens. Chatvishtim means the four, the four. The four steps of sadhana. Four stages. Sravana, manana. Nidityasana. Nidityasana. Samadhi.
So it is very simple. Think that God is within you, and it's because of the presence of God your very breath is going on. He is sustaining your breath. He is activating your brain. And so, whatever the brain thinks, whatever the mouth speaks, whatever the actions are done, whatever the actions are out of the body. They all belong to the divine. God only does it. That is why you have to think that you are only an instrument.